Um, I mean, you you guys leveled up uh, a couple episodes ago. You just haven't slept. I know. Yeah. I was so scared that there was going to be another battle. I was just looking forward to going to sleep at the end. Yeah. Like, oh my god, please don't let there be an encounter. As soon as I had you roll for perception, you're like, no! Yeah. No, I don't want to. I perceive nothing. Uh, <laughs> I fall asleep at the table. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Nat One Network. I'm Terry Mayo, and I am the Dungeon Master for the Homebrew D&D campaign, Whispers and Echoes, a custom Dungeons & Dragons adventure set in the Forgotten Realm, uh, brought to you by Mainframe Comic Con and Nat One Network. Thank you for joining us. Uh, if you enjoy what we do, click the like button like 14, 15 times. Drop us a comment. If you don't like us, drop us a comment. Give us a like button, whatever. Uh, and if you're feeling extra generous, extra loving, Go and give us a subscribe at uh, Mainframe Comic Con. Uh, also, you can follow Nat One Network on Twitter and Instagram at Nat One Network for your daily fix of D and D uh, delightfulness. Uh, speaking of Nat One Network, let me see if I can figure out how to bring in our lovely cast of adventurers. <gasps> Ooh, we're here, Josh, Carla, Freddie, Eric, Barney. Welcome. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Hey. Let me Un unmute right. <laughs> Keep doing that, please. Yeah. <laughs> just mute me. Just mute me. Every time you come into contact with an NPC, I'm just going to kind of mute you and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> give, give you a minute to kind of catch your breath. And then <gasps> All right, cool. So we had a fun episode last time, and I'm I'm, I'm really uh, geared up. I want to jump into this episode uh, five. It looks like, but before we do that, um, our our the brains of the group, Mr. Freddie Packer. Wanted to give some kind words uh, towards uh, something going on on Mainframe Comic Con. Is that correct? Uh, uh, yeah, it's very much so. But first, I would like to say I'm um, I'm already in character, so I'm Mark. I'm no longer Freddie Packard. I've already transformed myself into a six foot four inch half orc, half human uh, barbarian of sorts, um, who's, who's got beautiful bluish greenish skin and if you saw me you'd like me too and by the way i, I take very much pride in the things that i consume because i want to watch my figure so with that being said what pays the bills over here at mainframe comic-con is talent talk talent talk is a collection of sorts of of people that are much more sophisticated than i am and I recommend that you check it out. And we're going to play you a quick little ad. Well, not necessarily an ad. It's not actually an ad because they're actually paying us to do this. But we believe in it. <laughs> and we believe in it, what they're doing. Because you might learn some things or two. How to write a comic book. You might get to talk, if you'd like to, to the man who created, I don't know, the Watchmen. Uh, you have a political point of view that you want to talk with one of the top people on Capitol Hill. Well, they're on there, too. You like this Twitch follower and person who does these games? Well, you know, you can meet your idol. I don't know. Check it out. Here is the not so much of an ad because they didn't pay us to do this. They were examples of all the archetypes of hero comics. You know, there was the kind of Superman, which was Dr. Manhattan. Chaos is very good for extremists across ideologies. You know, it was big talk coming from a mid-90s teenage main character with a leather jacket, too cool for school attitude, and a catchphrase. Regardless of what I said about it in terms of my descriptors, what you should take away is the wine is yummy and you need to drink this stuff now. Thank you very much, Freddie. I appreciate it. So, um, like I said, I want to jump right in. We finally got to the midnight in. Uh, so welcome, party. If you are ready to get started, then uh, we're going to start uh, episode five of Whispers and Echoes. Echoes, 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 echoes. It's too quick of an echo. Echo.
So where we left off last time, um, after freeing Ebazon Tree Wiley from captivity in the uh, the catacomb cottage Tree Wiley family retreat, the group agrees to leave him and pass on a warning of impending danger to Tree Wiley's true love, Trilina, at the Midnight Inn. Uh, before making their way uh, to warn Trilina, the group comes across a newly formed sinkhole right in the city center, uh, south of the Blarney Snake. Uh, after confirming that there are no dams on this damsels in distress, no one that needs to be saved, uh, and seemingly no impending danger, the group pushes on deeper into the city of Stonewall until they're standing in front of uh, the shadows of the Midnight Inn. And this is where we will pick it up. So what you see, um, Josh had, or sorry, uh, Kellen had taken off a little bit earlier than the rest of you guys. Um, with his mighty legs, he had maybe got a full city block ahead of you guys. And he was the first one to get to Midnight Inn. Uh, you guys have him in your sights, but you, you did pass through the uh, Stonewall streets itself. Um, it's a pushing 4.30ish, almost pushing 5 by the time you get there. Uh, the sun is starting to dip over a lookout point, casting this huge shadow over this entire area. Um, and it is a seedy looking area. Um, the dregs of Stonewall are, are hanging out in this area. Um, it would not be abnormal that you guys had been to Stonewall before. It's that kind of city. Um, not necessarily meaning you were, but Bree for sure you have been. Um, and what you notice right away is there's a difference. There's, there's a bit of a change. And it started right from the time you crossed the bridge. And that that's, you're starting to see things are a little bit more run down the high class, the nobility that you were used to in Stonewall, it, it's still there. It's still there in name. It's still there in stature, but you are seeing that things are looking less high class and more middle class. Um, and that just, that theme just continues as you get to the midnight end. They have a dump. What did you say? That? It's say, a bro? bit of a dump. It's a bit of a dump. What? I mean, this is luxury compared to what I'm used to. I don't doubt that. Well, how kind of you. Hey, over here. Over here. I got a seat. Oh. Seat oh. right over here. Oh, it's Kellen. There he is. Wait a minute. Are we already. Are we. Um, got a quick question, Kellen. Um, uh, what's it like in there? What, what do you mean? I'm, I'm you... calling from inside. Well, I'm asking, Sorry. what's the what's the atmosphere? I don't know if I want to go in yet. No, I can't move. They're going to take the seats. They're, there's people all around. <laughs> I'm holding the seats. Get in here. Better rescue him, don't you think? Come on, Ma. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Let's head on this is the This is what that midnight in or whatever. <laughs> so, um... You, as you guys start to enter the the midnight inn, you do the, there's a difference, and I'll just put this up for a little bit, just for just for show. Um, there are more people in here than what's represented on the map. Uh, the two groups that are sticking out to you the most, uh, there's a group that are over there by uh, Ruby Jewel in the back of the room, table full of ale, table full of empty bottles, empty glasses. They are having a, a riotous time right now. Uh, loud, obnoxious, Ruby Jewel. Uh, multiply that by about 10, and that's what they are. Um, there are patrons throughout, uh, different citizens, but these groups stick out. Ruby Jewel's group, and then down further, there's a group of gentlemen that all have like yellow sashes on. They all have like um, some sort of ornamentation, all representing something yellow on them. Sashes, uh, scarves, bandanas, you do see, uh, kind of approaching you, a um, a Goliath. If you haven't seen one before, th this guy is about eight, eight feet tall, if not taller, pushing about 400 pounds, tattooed from fingertips all the way up to his skull, um, which isn't abnormal if you've seen a Goliath before. Kellen, what you notice is that he's got a kind of a fairly fresh tattoo uh, right underneath his chin, kind of in the shape of a W. 
for most people that wouldn't really stick stick out for you it does stick out it's a symbol that you've seen before in gavin gloom uh and it usually is a symbol that follows uh dread um he approaches you guys hey ruby it looks like your echo lot has finally arrived I want to elbow um, Moth and say, boy, this big and makes you look like a medium man. <laughs> you know what they say. I actually, hold on one second. I wrote this down. Hold on. Uh, no man. need for poetry. No, uh, no, yes, no, I believe no, we're no, looking no, for Ruby no, Jewel. No. You don't get to just elbow me and not get the, the best part. A, a, wise, a wise man once said this to me. I... The taller and the larger they are, the harder they fall. You need a book That's for that. Short <laughs> and pointless. <laughs> I like Ruby, it. Ruby, Ruby. So, uh, hello, gentlemen and, and lady. Um, Ruby told me to give you a hard time when you arrived, but by the looks of you, someone already beat me to it. <laughs> like uh, that, that's true. <clears throat> uh, what time is it? Like, how late are we? Because we were supposed to meet him, I think, around noon. Noon. So it's pushing yeah. about 5 o'clock-ish. Mm. Yeah. So, um... Hey, big right. fella. What's your, what's your name, tall man? My name is Bonebreaker. Huh. That's it. Is that what you were trying to spell right here on your shoulder? You realize they forgot the E? Ruby, can I hurt them yet? <laughs> And then Ruby's starting to stumble his way over, kind of holding on to this tree trunk of a man, or Goliath. <laughs> leave him be, Breaker, leave him be. Boys, it must be almost noon. It took you forever to get here. What have you been doing? What have you been up to? Why are you so filthy and dirty and full of blood? Well, well. I'll let anyone else explain that one. <laughs> well, come on, come explain it at the table. You can meet the boys. You can meet them. They will have a wonderful time with you. Well, while, while you guys are going to head over there, I'm going to head to the, the men's room and wash off the souls of my captives. And uh, I'll be right back. So that'll be outside there, Moth. No bathrooms on the inside. It's not that kind of establishment. We're more of like, you know, three star, two and a half, maybe. Wait, is that your beer on the table, Mr. Jewel? Uh, you're gonna have to point out which one. This row of ten, this row of twenty, which one? They're all mine, but you can point one out. Can, can I just have one real quick? Of course! And he, like, tosses it over to you. I was gonna take it and splash it on my face, and then just kind of, like... Okay. I um, press the digitation so his face is dirty as soon as he cleans it up. <laughs> 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 well, sit tight. The, the, the wait staff here is, is wonderful. They'll get with you. Let me finish off with me, mates. You can fill me in on all the adventures you've had, and then we can get started with our day. Yes? Yes. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. All right. So Ruby heads back over to his, his table. Uh, you can see that the other guys, they're dressed like you would expect someone who's been on the sea. Uh, if you want to label them as pirates, then they would not disagree with you. Um, the, <laughs> as you were crossing the bridge, if you recall, you saw this very large human, very hairy human. He's sitting at that table as well with the, with the other pirates uh, that Ruby's heading back to. They're all kind of looking at you and you kind of get this feeling that you guys are an inside joke as, as Ruby's walking back, kind of sauntering back. Uh, they're kind of snickering almost. Um, and, that's where you guys are. It's like high school again. <clears throat> Wait, is there enough room at the table that they're at even for all of us? No, you guys are at a different table. So, um, again, looking at the... Um, uh, I'm going to... Oh, go ahead, sorry. Looking at the, at the map, sorry. Uh, these two long tables are empty. The rest are full. Uh, so you can choose to pick any of those that you like. 
Hey, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna huddle the group in together and be like, uh, one second, gents, before we start. I gotta ask these uh, more fine, uh, you know, soldier for brethren's a uh, quick question. I'm gonna huddle the group in together really quick and kind of like usher them to a circle. Listen, boop, and 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 my little demolition friend over here. Um, can you do us a favor? Can you distract them for maybe ten minutes? Four. We're gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, tap honeycomb and, and cask on the on the shoulder. We're gonna sneak out to go to room two o four, where we think that Lady Trelina is. If you could distract them for a minute, considering that. Them. Why are we committing this insubordination? <laughs> you prefer to just tell them that Trelina's here. Yeah, well, she's supposed to be an officer. I'm going to pick my head up out of the circle. Yeah. One, one minute, one minute, Jokes. We'll be and I'm going to kind of come back in. We don't got much time to discuss this. Course. There's no reason to. I mean, There's we could either we can either sit down and maybe have a pint and yeah. uh, uh, some food. Gosh. I haven't eaten in a while, and uh, or I, I guess I can blow something up. But my face isn't really clean, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to step out. You washed it. You look great. Well, no, I mean, don't you notice? It's got this weird. I don't know. It's like it, I feel like it didn't really come off. No, it looks, it looks about the same. No, it's fine. I mean, the same as when you were clean. <laughs> Cask, it doesn't this look dirty to you? I think that uh, all we need tell him is that we found Trey White, right? <laughs> but should we tell but him that? Why not? Why not? That we are and then we can. Uh, just be on our way and go check out 204. We need not distract anybody. I feel like we may want to let him know that we've found information about Jim Wiley. And maybe not give him the full information yet. Don't get me wrong. I love this huddle. I'm going to huddle around a pint. So I'm going to break the huddle and walk to one of the tables. Mm -hmm. I'm going to... uh... I'm just kind of reading the room here. I don't really get the sense that they care too much about us. Exactly. Yeah. I've so, walked over with Boot. <laughs> so are you guys, uh, Cask and, I'm sorry, uh, Boot and, and Kellen, are you guys walking towards a bar or just any any specific area? Just just walking to someone, a wait staff? They do table service uh, here, right? Is there a bar? Yeah, I will. I'll There's a bar. Up. There's a bar. So just to, uh, sorry, I didn't set the scene really well. I apologize. Mm-hmm. So there is a stage uh, off to the left of the room. A uh, pretty big stage. It looks like it's, it sees its fair share of entertainment in, the, in this joint. Most of it drunken, most of it not very good, but it sees it. Uh, piano, lute, any kind of instrument that you can imagine, in some way or shape it is there. Uh, whether it works, you don't know. Uh, there are about six, seven tables in here that can fit about six to eight people each, give or take. Um, and then in and out, just people coming in and out. Most of them, like with their, if they're wearing a hat, it's kind of lowered or their scarf is around them. It's not the place that you would bring a first date. Um, you, there is a bar off to the right of the, uh, of the, of the building. Uh, you see a uh, mid 50s to 60s human female, uh, kind of with an apron, cleaning off tables. And then you see a, uh, what looks like a, maybe a, a stout halfling. Uh, kind of cleaning dishes, walking around, uh, very curvaceous uh, halfling, uh, and she looks like she is having the time of her life. I will walk to the bar. I think Colin and okay. I had an idea on our heads, and we're going to go straight to the alcohol. Okay. All right. So as you approach, uh, you're approaching the uh, the halfling, um, and as she sees you coming. Oh, look at that. Two hey, lovely boys coming to see me, have you? What can I do you for? Oh, hello, love. How oh, you doing tonight? I'm digging the oxen now, matey. Well, um, yep, comes comes as a full package, as you can say. Um, two pints of lager, please. Two pints of lager. Come and ride up. Uh, same, uh, two for one each or two just for you, adventurer. Awesome. Do you want a pint of lager, eh, Kellen? I, I, I'll, I'll have a pint, yes. I'll have a, a pint, pint, yeah. yeah. Okay. A pint oh, for the half pint. 
Anything that I, I I can get for you. Any food, any any figs, nuts, berries, poultry, lamb. Uh, I'm gonna look back at the group and say, mm, best make it three more pints, and uh, I'll take the lamb. I'll have some of the poetry. Okay. Not poetry, right? I've had enough of that. <laughs> yeah. Don't have an appetite for poetry. Sophisticated type. We're talking about poetry. You're gonna make me blush. Then. Um. All oh, right. All you have to do is talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> she slides the she slides oh, yeah. the uh, slides the, the lager over to you guys. Uh, he says, I'm going to go put in your order in the kitchen, help yourself to any kind of nuts on the bar. Uh, they've been fresh, been out for almost a week, so they should be still good. Uh, and it just kind of like wiggles as she walks towards the kitchen. I think, I think she fancies you. She kept looking up. I don't know about that. No. Well, so good. good Hard dark now. That's what they call me. Um... <laughs> So, so as they're sitting at the bar, you guys are back at the table. Uh, di- were you guys doing anything else? Um, I was going to... I'm still kind of... Listen, cask, Bree, I'm telling you, I don't like the sense of these pirate folk. I don't think we belong with them, per se. And I, I do believe we should probably go to room 204 while we got the chance. How about this? You go to room 204, and I talk to the captain. Yes, uh, we, can, we can do that. I will go with you. And uh, if something bad happens, can you create a distraction? There's a stage up there. Can you entertain them? Use your magic words and music? Just give us 10 minutes. Or 5. 10, preferably. Me. Or five. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't think anybody else here can really, you know, use the words besides me with my poetry. Okay. Oh, <laughs> just, just go and tell a story, or know, how tell many people, DM? How many people are in this bar? Is it like uh, five PM, or is it like <laughs> this is a this is a busy five PM? Uh, so roughly less than twenty. It fluctuates between 15 and 20. Okay. Can, can I take you to the stage? <laughs> All right. Bring, no pressure. Uh, no pressure. <laughs> um, can I look around the room? Where where would I see like an entrance to kind of go up towards the rooms, I guess? So um past uh, down to the right of the of the of this floor, uh the group of five um gentlemen wearing the ye- yellow sashes, yellow bandanas. There is a little alcove. Um, there's a door that leads to what you might guess is like a kitchen or a pantry. But back behind that, there's a, there's a little hallway slash alcove. Um, you don't see any stairs, but if there might be some back there. Um, who, who would be um, the person that I would kind of guess would be the person that I would go up to try to get a room from if I was to stay here? Bar- barkeeper? Yeah, you would have to ask around. Tavern Wish. Right. I don't think, listen, we could either A, pretend that we want to get a room, or B, we could just kind of sneak off to the corner. What do you think? Let's sneak. If you ask, it's going to bring some attention. All right. As soon as Cass jumps up on that stage, you and I are going to wander off. Yeah. Can I have your your arm, and then we can pretend we're, I don't know. (laughs) Friends? Perfect. (laughs) <laughs> really really good friends I mean, so point, so maybe I'll just come no, no can I be this, ain't gonna, this ain't gonna work really too much break your little short <laughs> okay um you guys are standing up cask are you walking to the stage right now is that what you're doing yes um okay. sure uh all right do you want me to distract <laughs> yeah so before he starts just uh doing that um I'm not going to have you roll or anything like that because it is it is pretty busy. But what you do see as you start, are you guys walking towards that that hallway or what are you doing? We're waiting. We're waiting for Cask to start distracting before we walk to the. Make Cask the la Lionel. Yeah, I stay as I stroll up to the stage with my loot, just 
hammering away, de facto leader and captain of the brave Bastardi, hero of the ghost of the graves, legend of the trackless sea, and four-time undefeated champion of the prosperity fisherman's raid. That is where you raid the fishermen of the coast with your crew. My name is revered and respected. My people know me as a tabaxi of iron will and steadfast courage beyond comparison. Tonight, I will tell you the story of how I lost my crew. They left me in a skiff with nothing but a ten-foot stick and a bottle of brandy. But, ironic, because I do not drink. <laughs> nice okay all right so what you notice uh do me a favor go ahead and roll for uh performance just for me that was fantastic <laughs> it's advantage <laughs> as speaking as not i feel inspired uh, <laughs> a dirty 20. Ooh. Okay. So what you see and what, what everybody else in the room sees is that you are captivating, especially this group of of, uh, of pirates. They're all kind of turning towards you. As you say the words, brave bastardi, you see uh, this large, hairy human kind of just kind of look up at you and start squinting and cocking his head and the other pirates kind of looking at each other and and you can hear them Cascola, Cascola, uh, that kind of thing. The people in the back of the room wearing the yellow sashes kind of looking as well but a little bit more skeptical but you have everyone's attention. Okay, let's go. Back. go, 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 go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Bree, we got to go to room 204 to follow me and I'm going to kind of start like ushering um, Kind of sneakily trying to stay to the shadows a little bit, and like <laughs> while, pe while people are looking at us, we're kind of like do 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 um, around and up to the stairs, okay. um, and we're gonna start walking towards the I guess the hallway of rooms or whatever might be over there. So um, as you pass that table full of uh, yellow sash wearing guys, um, there's a bigger guy, really muscular. Um, if steroids existed in prosperity, he's on them. Um, He's kind of eyeballing you as you walk past, not really doing much, but just he, you, he's watching you, looking at Cask, looking at you, looking at Cask. Uh, so he's kind of torn between the two. Uh, but that, you, you pass him with ease. Um, heading towards the stairs, um, it's your basic stairs. There is no door, no nothing like that. As you get up there, you do see that it is, it, it's a little bit run down, a little bit seedy. It's, it's, um, most of these rooms are paid by the hour. Um, Oh, room, number, room number's on the door, uh, and it starts off with like 201, 202, 203, 204, and it kind of goes down this hallway. Um, down at the end of the hall, Moth, you have dark vision, so you see, Bree, uh, you can see that there's like a silhouette down at the end of the hall, but not really able to tell what it is. Uh, the halls are dim. I mean, it's like there's mood lighting going on. Um, and down at the end of the hall, Moth, you see a... Uh, what looks like uh, a really petite looking male gnome uh, wearing a fedora uh, and a purple jacket. Um, and he's just kind of standing there watching as you two kind of come up and he's kind of running his fingers across this, this uh, sack. Uh, it looks like a coin, coin sack. And he's just kind of watching you guys as you, as you come um, up. Uh Sir, you and the, the end, they told me that I was supposed to pay you before I got into one of the rooms here. Is that is that accurate? You're going to have to be more specific, Sonny. Who's they? Uh, well, it was the barkeep. I asked for an hour. This is me, uh, <laughs> my lady friend. <laughs> um, and I would like to, um, you know, get one of the rooms for just, just a quick hour. I don't know what kind of establishment you take this for young one but uh you might be mistaken uh who sent you by name hey, wait, um hey uh one, one second hey Bri, i'm gonna hit him on the head as hard as i can <laughs> he squeals i want you to i want you to cover his mouth okay okay for when diplomacy doesn't work <laughs> Uh, just knock him out? Are you sure you don't want to stab him? <laughs> this is, let, this is I, don't, I don't really know the name because I just came. I didn't ask for names. Uh, was I supposed to? 
Uh, Dear, I mean, if, I, we don't ha- if we don't have to pay, let's not pay him. This all right, well, we're just going to go into this room here. We'll talk let's to you. Go. Yeah. Come on. Let's be so quick. As you, go, as you go for the doors, the doors are, are locked. I'm not sure which door you're going for. What, what room are you going for? <laughs> What room are you going for? 205. 205. So 205 is further down the room, closer to him. He's like, oh, you're going to have to do a lot better than that, young one. Tell you what, go talk to Bertha. She can give you a pass. Uh, and thus I get a pass. There's not much I can do for you. You can always go out back. That's what the younger folks do. <laughs> uh, I'm going to kind of pull out my, my gold sack. I'm going to pull out one gold coin. One gold coin. And you, uh, how about you go out back for 10 minutes? One gold coin. Look at you. Um, keep your gold, young one. Keep your gold. I, I like your style. What you can do for me is bring me a purple drink the next time you get a chance. Bertha's cut me off all the way. It kind of sends me in a tizzy. But if you bring me a purple drink, then I'll let you come in this room. I'll bring you two. Yeah, I knew I liked you. All right, well, that's not too much. We're, we're going to go into this room, if you don't mind. Do you mind unlocking this door? 205, unlocked. There you go. No, no, no. Can, can you unlock this? Actually, I would like to go in this. We have a friend that's uh, from out of town that we actually came to see. Um, can you perhaps this door here? Are you pointing at 204, Moth, I'm guessing? Yeah. Okay. So as you point to 204 and you tell him what you're saying, do me a favor and roll for deception. Oh shit! We could have gone through the window outside, but right, deception. The good news is, I have plus one. <laughs> oh, twenty! Okay. <laughs> Not, unnatural twenty, but, um, okay. but still twenty. To, Dirty. Dirty twenty. Dirty, huh? 30, 30. All right. Rolling well so far. So his uh, the jovial look, and he was about to like unlock two hundred five. But he lowers his hand and he's like, Do you have an invitation for that room, young one? Um, let's just say somebody who cares, cares about the person who's in that room gave us a verbal invitation of sorts. All right. Um, you hear a knocking as he, he makes a little gesture with his hand. And in 204, you hear the door knocking. Uh, From the side, there's a slide up at the top, and it kind of slides open. Yes? Um, Is that female or or Yeah, is that a female voice or a male voice? That was my female. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Harry Winkle? (laughs) Yes, baby. Hi, Harry. We have a message um, for a... um, a, uh, a, a, I'm going to whisper so the person doesn't hear. A, a Trilina. But that's my whispering voice, apparently. Um, you need to. Can, can we come in just for a moment? Who is this message for? Let's just say um, if love exists, this would be your happy ending. So as, as this person is leaning closer, uh, Bree, you don't really see it because the, the opening is, is, is high. Sorry. Uh, Moth, you do see it. And what you see are these bright red eyes uh, leaning forward. You see these, these uh, beautiful horns uh, coming from the forehead, long flowing hair. Uh, what you can tell is the features look really beautiful, uh, but the eyes, eyes almost seem to be uh, on fire almost. Um, candles in the room kind of like start to like flicker behind the door. Um, I think you have the wrong room. Do you know a uh, Mr. Tree Wiley? You definitely have the wrong room. Hey, well, fuck me. Um, I'm supposed to let you know that the time has come. Do me a favor, roll for deception. Shit. <laughs> How many of these can I do in a row? <laughs> Eleven. Okay. <laughs> Is that passing? No. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Once again, I think you're at the wrong room. 
I believe you're looking for a halfling downstairs. And she kind of shouts. Ksh. Okay. Let's go. I'm going to, I'm just going to make a mental uh pin of the location of that room. God, and yeah. just okay. grab his arm and just let's start walking. Okay. Um, so, so real, real quick, DM, DM, real quick. Uh, so she had horns and red eyes, mm -hmm. and she was tall, she was tall and long hair. Yeah, about five ten ish. You would you would guess. Yeah. Um. So while you guys are upstairs, uh, talking to the gnome and the door, uh, you guys are downstairs. So, uh, Cask, as you're up on stage, these pirates have kind of, or the the group with Ruby have stood up and they're kind of sea shanting and they're kind of going back and forth, uh, really just egging you on. They're like, oh, encore, encore. And they're really like just giving you, uh, they're giving you your props. Um, at the bar, um, the halfling has brought back your your, your food. Uh, so someone ordered, ordered poultry, someone ordered uh, lamb. Is that right? Chicken spice. Chicken All right, so she gives you your food, uh, goes back to doing the, make sure if you need anything else, tell him, uh, you know, I'm here. Oh, it's, um, you wouldn't happen to be buffer, would you? Oh, no, God, no. Oh, I'm not going to take offense just because she is my employer. But my name is not Bertha. My name is Trelina. Uh, Bertha is the, is the, hmm, I'm sure she was handsome back in her day. But the, the elderly woman down there with the apron. Now, I do beg your pardon, Miss. You are just such a fine young gal. I, um, to be honest, I've only heard of both her name, and I never would I mistake her for you if I would have known. <laughs> well, aren't you a flirt? Look at you. Ruby, I love your friends. <laughs> uh, I, I kind of whispered a boot, but it's kind of like pulling aside. Shalina, that name yes. sounds familiar as well. Yeah, probably should, because it's uh, the old man's uh, the naked elven dude, remember? So it's junk. It's his girl. It's his bird. His yeah. missus, I think. Weren't we supposed to tell her something about... Yeah, probably. I'm yeah. going to start eating. <laughs> okay. At this point, can I be coming back down from the stage towards their yeah. table? Yeah, of course. Whatever you like. So as you as you're exiting back down, just hand after hand, of patting you, patting you. Um, if you allow it, uh, the large large human, hairy human, is coming at you, and he wants to give you a hug, uh, and he's he's unrelenting. Kind of grabs you. He's like squeezes you. Oh my God, the brave Bastardi! I haven't heard that name in a in a in a dog's year. Oh my God! And did you say your name was a uh, Cascola? Cascola Lionel. Oh my god, it's like music to my ears to hear such a beautiful name. Um, tell me, Cascola, how long are you here with all of us fine gentlemen at this bar? Uh, how long is this night? It's as long as you want it to be, mate. Well, we can't we hold it. it <laughs> what could we do to get you to come back on stage with us later, sing some shanties, call the night our own? What do you say? It would be my honor. I, I will hold you to it, all right? I'll let you get back to your friends. Oh, and the brave bastardy, you were on that. That wasn't just a tale, right? Of course, sir. Okay. All right. And then he just kind of claps and he goes back to the group. I told you, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Did you see that? That was crazy. He thought that I was on a ship. Uh, anyway, what are you guys up to? <laughs> you, you said you were. <laughs> <Mine>. <laughs> Boy, Cask, you really played the pants off that thing. Yeah, we're just eating in a little bit of... What is this? What did I order? Hey, your I poultry. You ordered order the bird. Not that bird, but a bird. It does it look like chicken? Uh, no, it does not. It does not look like chicken. I, I don't it know. Had, it had wings at some point. I make it taste like like chicken. dinosaurs. Oh, oh, boy, uh, Kesk, this is for you. I'm gonna throw on one of the extra beers that I ordered. Okay. Oh, wonderful! 
I'll just kind of keep it in front of myself. Um, Trelina oh, has is that waitress? bounced. Oh yeah, by the way, um, Trelina, you know, the Mrs. of uh, Trewiley. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's her. Yeah. Oh, kind of easy, well, right? Her. Where were they going? <laughs> Um, I will walk up to her. I will rise up out of my seat and walk up to her, if that is okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, she's uh, she's further down the bar washing dishes. But go ahead. I will just lean over and whisper, "Head to Red Star, and meet at Sunset Bridge." And then I will walk back to the table. Okay. Um, Without right. her, like even having a chance to respond. <laughs> okay. So you don't even see her response, but okay. Okay, so do we make it back to the table? Yeah, if you guys are coming back, you can rejoin at any time. Uh, is that as you pass as you pass by the the gentleman wearing uh, the yellow sashes? Again, the 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 roided up gentleman uh, really is making eye contact with you guys. <clears throat> do I if I notice that I will say, uh, "Don't worry, that happens sometimes." <laughs> no, just grab him. It's it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. I don't, I don't really know um, exactly <laughs> yeah. what you're talking about. Of but... course, it, denial is it's fine, it's fine, and I'm gonna just w push him. <laughs> as we that get back, happens to every guy. As, as we get past him far enough, I'm gonna be like, you realize, I know you couldn't see in the slit because you were a short person, but <laughs> the person had horns and red eyes and long hair, and behind her, I could see candles, and they went. Like a tiefling? I don't know what. It, I mean, have you I seen that? Like where, I, where I'm from, Bree, yeah. it's primarily killer birds mm -hmm. and weird animals okay. that try have, to eat you. Have you ever you seen a drawing of you know a devil? Like angels and devils, hornies. Oh mm. my! Uh, I've seen wild beasts that, you know, give you quite the scare. But well, she's scary. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't am I, do you take offense to the um, the bad words? Fuck no. Oh, okay, well. She fucking she fuck looked kind of crazy, if you ask me. I mean, who's got eyes that bleed red? Some people. Yeah. Have you ever had, like, a mad hangover? Bray, I, I used to be an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> used to be? Yeah, I, I'm still bad. <laughs> um. I don't know. I just heard. I think I heard Kevin from somewhere. But um, <laughs> oh, hello! It's Martin Bree. Um, it is oh, fine. We'll talk, we'll talk about this later. Come on over, have you a beer. Are, Mission you accomplished. Know. What did you oh, guys do? Oh, it's in the past. It's in the past. Uh, I used to kill people. I'm, I'm gonna grab Kevin's beer and I'm gonna chug it and, I, and I'm gonna look down at Bree. Denial. Like I said, used to be. <laughs> I, I used to kill my... people. Get on <laughs> So, um, the halfling makes her way back down and, oh, Dark Elf, you brought your friends along, so, uh, can I get you guys anything to drink or eat? Yeah, um, can I have some, uh, food? Yeah, I mean, what would you like? It looks like the poultry, um, we have... Well, we have poultry. I mean, yeah, uh, lamb, uh, rabbit. I think we have a few eggs. Don't just oh. don't just sit I there. I do have the menu. Yeah, oh, you I have the menu. My, menu. I'm gonna go through my pocket. And I, oh, it's fine. I'm just gonna have nuts. I'm gonna go with nuts and start eating. Um, uh, I'll take I'll take five of your dark elf. Um, what do you call it? Um, your dark elf uh, wagon bombs. Yeah, I think what? Yeah, that that might be an off the menu item. I, I've never heard well, of that one. Well, let me tell you how you make it. You take you take your your whiskey, and you drop that your into your into an ale. Except it's got to be a blonde ale, 
And then when you take your dark whiskey, you drop it into blonde ale, and it turns into a darker drink, and you chug it. It's, it's called a dark elf wagon bomb. Got it. Uh, Bertha, this gentleman wants to have it his way. What do we say about that? And then Bertha from across the room, you have it all way and no way, big one. <laughs> sorry, no. So sorry. we've got ale, we've got, we've got lager for the most stout at heart. We have pebble drink. Guess what? I'm going. Okay, I'll take. Oh, actually, can I get two purple drinks and then also uh, five whiskeys um, and then also five blondes, if you could, for, for beers? Got it. No food. What's a to... purple drink? A purple drink? Oh, that, a stout drink. A stout drink. You must have a strong constitution or else, you know, you may not wake up from that one. I'll take five. I'll take five. I bet you, I was just about to say, yeah. <laughs> I bet you cannot drink more than three, Moth. I'll take five. <laughs> we're, challenging, we're challenging him, we're challenging him, yes. Uh, so right, five well, blonde, well, five purple drinks, and then five shots of whiskey, if you could, for my friends. Thank you. Got it, all right. Oh, and some lap, and lap, and some Got it, got it. All right. Uh, not a professional waitress, but I'll do my best. And she kind of wiggles off towards the towards the kitchen. Uh, as she's doing that, she lays out everything but the purple drink. Uh, you're getting the impression that the purple drink is a specialty, and it's going to take a minute. What does she mean? She's not a professional waitress. Like, this isn't her real job. Maybe. I mean, things seem to be different around town. Yeah. A little bit more broggy, and. Um... You think she could be a part-time model? She's beautiful, maybe. She yes. still keeps her her normal job. Yeah. The, Why um, not? She's so pretty. Yes, would I know what would I know what kind of establishment this is? Like, if it's kind of um, like a brothel or, or not? You would know that upstairs is a brothel. All right. So I will I will tell the group about the difference between you know when I left uh, Prosperity and the current. Uh, situation, how it changed, and how you know, it seems yeah. a little uh, more... You, you know that the Midnight Inn, when you left, there were no brothels. There, this was this is a new kind of thing. I will let him know. So, uh, mission accomplished? We fail. You, you fell? Yeah, we couldn't find uh, this tro Trollina girl. Oh, Funny enough, it's actually our waitress. What? Yeah, she's right, right over there. Huh. Cass already spoke with her. I think we're okay from here, right, Cass? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did you say to her? Hey, you, you kind of walked over there in a, a, a mighty yeah, hurry. And then, uh... Probably be done, have handled differently, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that way maybe about several things tonight. Because uh, uh, who did you encounter in the room? Because well, um, that wasn't written, that wasn't from uh, Trawiley, I don't believe, because it was written on this here menu. Got a, got a quick question. Um, when we were with, and I'm going to kind of whisper it really low, when we were with Trawiley, did he say that Trelina was supposed to be in room 204? No. No. Um, you stole it from the menu that I have. Remember? You were looking over my shoulder and I was like, what the fuck are you doing over here? And you're like, you want to be taking a look? I'm a bigger and I don't really have much for propriety nor do I ask questions. I'm just going to look over your shoulder like a red, big, blue man. And, uh, <laughs> I, never, this is, I believe that's how it went. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, I'm I'm intelligent. I'm not the wisest, but I'm intelligent. And yeah. I kind of thought that that was going to be Trelina in that room. And it said, it said, it said to um, to let the person in 204 know that the time has come. Mm -hmm. Well, clearly, you can paper? read. Wait. What was that? Weren't those two different pieces of paper? I'm sorry to interject, but one was not one was a love note and the other was something else. That yes, they were two different pieces of paper. The second one he read over my shoulder. Um, it 
you know, Moff, I think you've got a great mind, clearly tuned for exquisite uh, poetry. Maybe keep the scheming to other people. Well, I did tell the person in room 204 that the time has come. Did you also read the other words on the note? No, what else would you A fucking one that said, come alone? Um, something oh. that, uh, uh... <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't read those ones. I only got to spy on half the paper. Well, oh. she, she didn't see me because, you know, I'm short. Um, which is probably good, but now that you were trying to put things together, um, your moth said that she looked like a freaking tiefling. Well, we found... they, how tall are tieflings, would you say? Uh, they're tall. Oh, okay. But I mean, everyone is taller than me. <laughs> I mean, they're they're kind of normal height. But she I mean, five. Let me let me just kind of just let me set the scene. She had red beady eyes. She had horns, long hair, and behind her were flickering candles that flickered a little more when I saw her eyes. Yeah, Cass can do that. I don't see the problem. Great job remembering well, the candles, but not remembering the fucking note. I'm mean, just putting it this way. She didn't let me in, but I did tell her that the time has come. So I guess we're all set. So you basically just threatened this woman. No, I told her the time has come. <laughs> um, just, if you think about it, didn't we find a book that it was in Infernal? I, I have it. Oh, okay. So keep, Infernal, it on the down. keep it down low, though. I don't know if it's supposed to be around other people. I'm going to look at Cask. I'm going to look at Boot. How tall are you, Boot? Everything is low for us. Um, it's pretty about, uh, about six hands. Huh? Uh, uh, so uh, I'm going to look at Boot. I'm looking, Cask, can you hear a word that these two are saying? I mean, they're literally just mumbling at my groins. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. Should we maybe, so, uh, oh, where's the captain? So Tr Trelina's coming back with, uh, with your drinks. Um, hand, hand, hand with uh, all, she's, she professes not to be a waitress, but she's handling these drinks with some ease. Uh, brings them back to you, puts them on the table. All right, love, there you go. Uh, five of the purple drink. You've already got your blonde, you've already got your lager. Uh, the lamb should be coming up. Miss Bertha will bring it to you. Make sure you tell her thanks. Uh, and if you need anything else, I'll be buzzing around. Cute as can be. That's me. Um, enjoy. And she again wiggles off. Have it. I love. Yeah, have it. Tell her something. <laughs> Can't have it our way, she said. And I'm going to take my drink, my blonde, and take the the whiskey <laughs> and I'm drop it in. And cheers. And then just slam it down. That was the purple drink, right? No, no, no. That was the blonde with the whiskey. Or five blondes and five purple drinks and five whiskeys? Yeah. Okay. It's a party. It's a party. He created a medieval Jagger bomb. Yeah. yeah. I'm going, I'm also, um, this drink it already has somebody's name on it. Um, and I'm actually going to grab two of them. And be like, I'll be right back. And I'm going to kind of shimmy <laughs> off the way from the table with the two purple drinks and leave the three at the table and all the rest of the drinks and kind of start heading back towards the stairs. So how okay. do we feel about letting um, okay. him make his uh, own decision? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Not very good. I don't I don't think there's much going on in there. It seems to be very reactionary. <laughs> and um, so, uh, reactionary and impulsive. Doesn't really uh he says he's intelligent, but like I said, he doesn't really think yeah, the, the ability to speak does not make one intelligent. <laughs> I speak. Um, so from behind you, <laughs> from behind you, um, that's oh, and also yeah, I, I hurt his feelings so much he left the stream. From behind oh, you, oh no! Uh, you hear He's... Ruby, uh, kind of at the top of his voice. He's like, "All right, Echo soldiers," and then uh, you hear this loud clamoring and, and crashing of dishes as he uh, picks up uh, one end of a table and just drinks, falling to the ground and shakes it. Boom. And he's like, this table's for you guys. Come on, have a seat. 
Oh, look at that. They're having patty cake. <laughs> Uh, That's canon too. We were just doing that at the table. <laughs> I'm not here. I'm going back towards the stairs. Oh, that's right. Dang it. <laughs> uh, so he's cleaned, he cleaned off a table to you. The table that he cleaned off is right next to his group. Um, they're staying at their table, but this table is cleaned off if you want it. Uh, and Moth is heading back upstairs. I grab one of the beers and head on over. I will sit next to... Um, Ruby. Okay. All right. Um, so as you guys are joining the, the table over there, he's kind of sitting down. You can tell that he is extremely drunk, uh, still under the impression that it's around noon. Um, so it looks <laughs> like you've got yourself into a bit of trouble. Uh, I lost a bet considerably because I swear that you guys would have taken off your armor by now. My bad, but it is hilarious a bit. You'll laugh about it tomorrow, I promise. Uh, I do recommend at some point you take that shit off, though. I'm still um, in a pirate costume. <laughs> yeah, I think we, we did take it off on our way over. I, I'm i still in it. I'm but I have a jacket over. I have a jacket over. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's red because of the blood I'm... and stuff. Well, I, I definitely was still in plain clothes when we changed to go to the spot, but... um. Well, Ruby, um, you wouldn't believe that mission accomplished. We're done. We're done here. So he's kind of elaborate, uh, boot, elaborate. Yes. Um, well, we are mission to come here and to find the missing ambassador. Correct? Do not tell me that you found this Trey Wiley character. Not only did we find him, that's his girlfriend. And I'm going to point out there. <laughs> Your point. So Ruby finds this extremely funny and he's, oh, 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 oh my, <laughs> Trelina's everyone's girlfriend, boot. <laughs> oh, don't tell uh, Trelawney that. He's a uh, little head over heels with her. Uh, he's going to be mighty disappointed. Oh my god, I cannot wait to tell the mates about this one. But no, back to the back to business. Back to business. Uh Trey Wiley. Mm -hmm. Um I'm assuming you found him alive and well, but and I naked. don't and naked. Well, it was that kind of party, I guess. No, um no. so so what what we got five days, six days. How long have we been here, Boot? Uh, it's about noon, right? <laughs> You guys work quick. See, I knew I chose the right group. Um, all right, well, shit, we got some R&R &R coming to us, right? Tell me, though, what did Trey Wiley tell you? Hey, you know, he just said a lot of uh, stuff. I kind of look at Cask and whoever else is around. Wiley, when when we found him, he told us that we, the Burning Beacon, are planning an attack on this very place in Stonewall. So Ruby gets serious, probably the most serious you've seen him. Even even the first night in the chapel, you, there was anger, but it, you were still that kind of like eh, like that 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 little edge to him. Dead serious right this minute, almost as if he's an instant sober. Go on, Cask. Well, he refused to be escorted off the premises, but... Um, well, we found him in a cottage by the old windmill. Uh, did you leave something. him... Say did, you leave him did you leave him alive? Is he still a among the living? Uh, to be honest, yes. We ran into a... We were attacked and defended ourselves with lethal force. We uh, not by Trewali. Not by Trewali. No, no, he is still alive. Yes, and hopefully clothed by now. So he's looking around at the group uh, minus Moth. So tell me what what does that make you feel about? Wow. 
Echo attacking Stonewall. Well, I'm my therapist. I, uh, I'm here <laughs> right now, so kind of nervous, I guess. <laughs> it's probably best that we're on that side, right? On the side. Maybe we shouldn't be here when it does happen. Do we know when it's going to happen? Is there something, Ruby, that you know that we should? Captain? Sir? So he's taking it in, and you can tell that he's got this internal struggle. Um, I knew that there was an attack coming. I knew. I, I knew. I don't know what this is going to do to our close-knit relationship that we've built together but i'm leaving the echo boys and girl i'm not going to be a part of that any i'm not going to be a part of this any longer i've come back to tell me mates i've come back to get me mom and we're leaving are, are you go avoid the mountains the thrykreen are there that's why we took the long way around, Kisk. I think you might have been sleeping, but... Oh, yes. The yes. word that I got is that the Thrykreen are attacking, that the Echo and Whispers are attacking, and that to make an example of Stonewall and Ben Rourke, and that's imminent. That's imminent. Hmm. I don't know what your loyalties are. The reason I chose you is because... It seems like your loyalties might be a little bit skewed. Huh. So, I reckon myself one for authority. Tell you what, I'm going to give you a choice, or at least an option that maybe I didn't get from my superiors. You're free to go back to the Echo tonight, today. <laughs> Leave by noon. That was a joke. Um, <laughs> and no one here is going to stop you or you can run if you're smart you'll run how are you getting out of here so he kind of looks over at his mates uh, you know we're all trained captains isn't that right Casco Le Leon <laughs> I've got a ship called the Ocean Jewel. Um, we're setting sail soon. We're taking as many people with us as we can. And we're sailing around, trying to get to Red Star if we can. Red Star. It's the rebel. It's a. Uh... Oh, you really have switched your loyalties, haven't you? If you ask me, King Daenerys switched loyalties for me. Oh, nice. <laughs> well done. Nice Do turn you... of phrase. <laughs> Do you need crew members? I've got crew members, but I don't mind having stowaways. Look, I I don't want to force you to do anything that you don't want to. Everyone joined the Echo for their own reason, or were forced to join for their own reason. Like I said, I chose you lot because... I didn't feel as though I'd have to kill you <laughs> when I told you that I wasn't going back. Oh, that's a relief. <laughs> oh, thanks. I know, yeah. I know, Boot, that you come from the Beacon, but I also know that you don't like the Beacon. Oh, and Kellen, I know that you come from Gavin Gloom, but you have an affinity for the explosion, and that could come in handy. Cascola, rumor has it you're some sort of a captain, some sort of a sailor. Something. I thought he was a cook. <laughs> like I said, rumor has it. And then Bree, I told you early on, if I knew exactly who you were, I wouldn't have chose you. But you're still welcome. Yeah. Well, I don't have anything else here. Might as well leave. I mean, I don't really have any business in in 
red star either. I'm thinking we can at least use this. Um, we can, we can come along. I, uh, I think my loyalties don't lie with the echo, and uh, anything that gets me, um, out of here, I'm willing to take. I'll take nice. you up on that offer. Yes, where is your sense for adventure, Kellan McClare? <laughs> <Yeah. Kella. laughs> Don't you strive to just make a name for yourself, to set out to blow up something big, something you can't even imagine. I like never said it. Like, like you can't even imagine it. Yeah. I can imagine quite big. Oh, then you are ready. We will accept <laughs> this. And what I'll, do you think? Gonna... I, what, what? I always wanted to see the sea. I never seen it, so. How much time do you say that we have? I honestly I mean... thought that, that they'd be attacking before we arrived, but I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. We passed through the Thrycrane. I was expecting to see them marching on us, but I didn't see that. This pains me to say because I really don't care. Where is Moth? Well, speaking of Moth, I was wondering if you thought he would be as equally. He was the one wild card for me. I chose him for different reasons, but I think we should leave him. I don't know. I think. I think so. <laughs> I think his, his loyalties lie with the Echo too much. If you ask me. <laughs> We should leave right now. Let's go. <laughs> it's coming back. Let's go. Avoid eye contact. Captain, so I guess that you know or you have your suspicious why every single one of us join um, the Echo. Do you have any idea about, about him? Moth? Moth. Mm -hmm. I know that he was gung-ho when he joined. And I also know that he's been labeled as a bit of a troublemaker. Maybe... From time to time, he goes AWOL, disappears without any notice. That's caused right. quite a few dry rats, probably. Um, I do see that there's something on his... He has his tattoo. And Ruby pulls up his sleeve, and he's got a similar tattoo uh, that Moth has. When I saw the tattoo, I was like, well, how can I not go down this road? And I hope I don't regret it. Is there a particular so, design that we need to know? What it looks yeah, like? um, yeah. So I'll put it up, and it's basically it's the the profile picture of Moth, and uh, on Moth's chest, you see that there's this kind of a glowing, it almost looks like a brand uh, tattoo. It's it looks like it's a magical type of tattoo. Um, I don't think Moth has really gotten into the background on that yet, uh, but it's there and it's prominent. And as Ruby pulls up his sleeve and shows you, he's he's got something that's quite similar, if not exactly similar, on his arm. Um, so as you guys are talking, uh, Moth, you you headed up, you you went upstairs. Uh, the yellow sash again, just kind of eyeballing you as you go. You're getting the 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 idea that he is keeping an eye on this set of stairs. Um, and you're back up there, and the gnome in the purple jacket and the fedora. Uh, Oh, back so soon. Did you got my pepper drink? I have two uh, pepper drinks. No one for you and another for you. Like I said, I would. Look at you. I knew when I first saw you that you was going to be a nice, respectable gentleman. Come on, yeah. give it to me. Oh, I'm going to give you these two pepper drinks, but I need one favor from you. Oh, I thought we already crossed this bridge, room 205, for two purple drinks. That was the deal. You don't want to go back on it now? Yeah, I'm going to ask that you unlock room 205 and you give me as much time as it takes you to drink these two purple drinks for me to do a little talking. To room 205? Feel free, you'll be alone in there. <laughs> and he unlocks the door and he comes to grab the purple drink and he starts I'm gonna kind of hold <laughs> While he's starting to slam my hands still and I'm holding the other one, I'm like, listen, listen, listen. Sometimes I speak too soon. I'm at 204. <laughs> you mind? So he's still kept, like almost licking this glass. I mean, he's he loves purple drink. Um, 
and but still uh, one eye looking up at you lad i don't have any say over 204 that's off limits to me even i can't unlock that door you think i could maybe you just turn around for a second and maybe do the little thing on the top so i can at least speak to old red eyes in there you give me both those glasses and you can strip naked and do a jig i won't care I was just naked not too long ago, and I didn't quite like it. I had little rats kind of festering around me, uh, me Johnson. So he's just tugging at the glasses. He does not care. <laughs> Here's your glasses. I want to go over there. I want you to just turn around, and you give me as much time as it takes you to actually finish these two drinks. And take your time. You don't want any indigestion. So he's just slamming them. And, uh, if he could get inside the bottle, he would. But. Okay, I'm literally going to head over to room 204. I'm going gonna, gonna to knock the way he knocked before on it. Okay, so the slide comes open and, and the same face, the same thing, just... Do you have an invitation for me this time? I came alone and, it, and I'll have... Um, the invitation was actually on a menu. Uh, you know, it's a little bit indisposed, but I am a friend, and I need you to believe that. Convince me. <clears throat> Things are a little bit different uh, around here lately, are they not? Quite. And if I said that, um... I was on the side that uh, wanted to see some change. What would you say? So the slide closes and you hear a series of locks and the door starts to kind of creep open. If and you if give you me the chat, you gonna, can go into I'm going to push the door open and I'm going to kind of let the door kind of open all the way before I step in and kind of assess, assess the room first really, for a second. See if there's any old ladies charging at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, old lady! I was able to kill her. <laughs> 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 the right. Got, got her. <laughs> um, okay, so as the door kind of creeps open, not by gravity, but like, it almost looks like someone's pulling it, but as you, as the door opens, you see that this, uh, which you can now see plainly as a tiefling, uh, wearing not a see-through nightgown, but it is very sheer and it is, it's very ornamental and it's bright yellow. Um, she has a pendant uh, around her neck, kind of pinned to the to the to the what is this called nightgown, um, and it has like a like a lion's head on it or a manticore head. There's like ornamental wings coming off the side of the head. Um, where are you from, Moth? What 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 area are you from? You're from one of the peninsula. Um, from the East Wildlands um, is where I'm originally from. Okay. Do me a favor. Just roll for history, real quick. Story. History. Ali is he. Ali Ababwa. Seventeen. The image, you recall that that means something. There's something regal about it. There's something noble about it. You can't quite put your finger on the who's and the what's and everything, but you you know you've seen that symbol before and it means something. Um, so you say you want change. Please come in and let's change things. Um, I'm going to recognize that that's kind of like a regal royal emblem and I'm going to take a knee. And I'm going to kind of keep my head down and be like, I've come to serve. Um, and, I, and I wish uh, my orders aren't necessarily clear. <laughs> and I'm not entirely to ensure what I'm getting myself into. Um, but I'm very much... I do. I've been under the thumb, if you will, for many years of my life. And I guess... Uh, I was told that there might be an opportunity to to uh, work with you on something. 
So she approaches you uh, almost like uh, the wind. I mean, you know it's not supernatural. You, you can tell that it's not, but there's a feeling in the air, almost like a, like a tingling in the air. And it almost seems like she is gliding towards you. I mean, that's how smoothly she's walking. Um, she kind of lifts up your chin and looks at you. Let's have an agreement, Moth. You tell me the truth, I'll tell you the truth. If at any time I feel like you're deceiving me, our conversation is over, yes? Well, I'm all about the truth because I'm really bad at lying. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I have no idea. <laughs> stand up. All right, I'll stand up. Where did you get your instructions to come see me? Where, um, do you know the uh, tree, tree wildly folk? I do. Well, uh, we saw him uh, naked in a, in a basement cellar thing. Um, there was seven heads and he was naked. Uh, I'd like to stress the fact that he was very much naked. Um, and well, there was a note on a piece of paper that said, go to room 204 and let them know that um, it has begun. Well, that's why I'm here. If I remember right, I gave a note to Miss Trelina, written on a menu, and it said, the time has almost come. Meet me in room 204, come alone. I feel like you're getting secondhand information, Moth. Is that is that accurate? Um, well, you said you want the truth, so yeah, absolutely, 110 percent. <laughs> However, I'm not Tell much me, of- Moth, why did- Go ahead. Go, ahead. Go ahead. I don't mean to cut off such a. I want the emblem and everything. I can recognize that you guys, you're a lady of some importance here. Um, so you, you first. Miss Trelina, I gave her that note to deliver to ambassador. I've been trying to locate many ambassadors. And I'm wondering, Moth, why you took it upon yourself, soldier, knowing the dangers in, that are in Stonewall for Echo soldiers? Um, well, I won't be honest with you. I don't think I just saw. First off, that damn Ruby Jewel who's downstairs, I can already tell that he, he picked us for a reason. I'm not entirely sure why. But I get that sense about him, and I don't necessarily... I like Stonewall, I like the sort here, and I like the freedom that Stonewall kind of provides in terms of being yourself. Um, in the military, I think I was trying to find myself, and I think being outside the military, I get a better sense of myself, if that makes sense. So from behind uh, you, you don't see it, but you do hear uh, a gnome kind of running just past the room giggling as loud as he can um that's what you hear but you don't see it she looks up looks back down we don't have much time to talk even though i am enjoying our conversation tell your friends cask boot brie and the other one <laughs> kellen <laughs> <laughs> that if they want change as well perhaps we can meet up do you know where the shrine of the serpent is um i got a map is it in this area or will we... actually no i have no no freaking clue <laughs> find the shrine there is an entrance to a sewage passageway. We're making our stand there. If you want to know more, you can find us there. Can I ask you a question? I recognize this from my brain, but I can't really put a... What does the, the lion represent? The lion represents our queen and our pride. That's, uh... Ah. So uh, she says the lion represents her queen and her pride. 
Uh, and with that, she's kind of floating backwards or, or stepping backwards, but it really seems so pretty. Uh, that'll be all, Moth. What? Um, I, I, I'm going to take my leave. I just got one last question for you, and I don't mean to intrude at all, even though I kind of knocked down your door, came in when I wasn't invited, and all that. Um, I guess that would be intruding, so I guess this is my last go at it. Um, do you got a name or a nickname so that way I know who the hell I can say I'm talking to or address to? My name is Varu. Varu. All right. And I'm going to kind of take out my book and I'm going to go like this. So the candles are lighting up. You can see her eyes are cut. She's done with her conversation. See you um, later. Goodbye. And I'm going to take my leave. And I'm like bowing goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. God uh, save the queen. God save the queen. And close the door. And I'm going to uh, walk out of the room. And I'm going to look around, see if the guy who's drinking the purple drink is still there. So, uh, yeah, the, the gnome is on the ground. And he's really just trying to get every drop that he can. So um, back downstairs, uh, what are you guys doing? <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> At least stumbled yeah. your way through that successfully. <laughs> <laughs> you successfully failed, or failed successfully. Um, this is kind of what I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. um, I think that at some point we've encouraged Cask to get back on stage. Um, well, probably. It's and not that a little bit of revelry <laughs> happening. Okay. So, Cask, are you back on stage? Sure. Yes. Okay. Until until I see uh, Moth coming back down, at least. All right, so Cask, you're up on stage. You do have some visitors. Some other pirates are up there. Uh, whatever you're doing, they're trying their hardest to mock you, and, and um, not mock you, but follow along. Um, but they, to the untrained ear, it still sounds shitty. So <laughs> they're, they're doing a bad job. Um, the large human clapping along off beat. Ruby still sitting at the table with, are you three still at the table? Yeah, got a few extra beer, empty beer so, bottles. Uh, so sitting at the table, still serious, um, and that's the scene. Sorry. Is Ruby with us, or he left? Ruby's sitting with me. This next performance is called Me. And I sit down and I start, I raise one leg up really high, and I just start cleaning myself. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> so, the, so let me let me interject so the the pirates that are up on stage with you as soon as you lift the leg up they're oh. then they start, yeah, yeah. i tell you what, if i could do that i'd do that and then they're just clapping along <laughs> performance check <laughs> Nine. <laughs> you still killed it. You still killed it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ruby's there. He's he's kind of thrown off his game. He the jovial Ruby is is checked out for right now, and he's still just kind of spinning his glass, his empty glass, kind of running around, um, and just kind of is in his own head for a minute. Um, Bertha comes up kind of pats him on the shoulder and are you all right love and he kind of puts his hand on her hand and he said yeah mom i'm all right you're muted yes i am captain what were you looking to set sail my mom has to close up things here at the shop for a while um, we're hoping as soon as possible uh, within the next couple of days. She has I a shot. The, quickest. the midnight in, it's Bertha's. My, my mother's Bertha. Wait, is she a, ha a half orc or an orc or a human? She's a human. She's a human. They're like, oh, all right. Uh, no judgments. A lovely place. I uh, I said so when I entered here. I said this this is a a fine establishment, <laughs> don't you think? 
and uh, everyone else nodded in agreement. It doesn't seem like there's much to close up, though. We had better days. Do you remember, Ruby? How it was? It was so... Alive. Before. I think you guys have been at White Cross for quite a while. The landscape is changing. People are going hungry. People are mad. There's no difference here in Stonewall. This used... My mom never would have had a brothel upstairs. She never would have had the goddamn pride sitting over there checking out every move people make. The pride? Who are they? The yellow sash wearing bastards over there. They don't look too tough. Numbers. Numbers mean a lot, Kellen. And they've got numbers. There's only like uh, one, two... Just a few of them. They're like cockroaches, boot. That's what you can see. Turn off the lights and they multiply. Ah, gross. Actually, uh, they wouldn't happen to have a couple of brothers in their ranks, would they? A fellow by the name of Shane and Jacob. <laughs> you met Shane and Jacob. Did you meet Stan? Oh, that guy's a dick. Oh, Stan? The Shane Did we meet Stan? Jacob. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, they're, they're good fellows, but they have no love for the Echo. If you ran across them, I... Did you run across them? Yeah. Well, they well, have they another Shane. reason not to we like the Echo. Unloading our stuff. <laughs> they have another reason not to like the Echo. Uh, You're right, Moth is a wild card. <laughs> So, Moth, have you rejoined at this point? Okay, so Moth is kind of sauntering up to the table again. Um, so you guys are all together. Cask, you're still up on stage. <clears throat> Hello, uh, I Mr. Step, Chu. I, I would yeah. step down and I would say, if you want me to come back tomorrow, give me money. I will be at the, the table <laughs> over there. Yeah. And then I will head over to where everyone else is. Okay. So, Moth, as you approach, um, Bertha has been busy this whole night, really. Um, even though it's not the type of establishment that, that Ruby's saying she wants, it, it's a busy establishment. She's she's making money, but doing it in a way that she doesn't like. Um, she sees you, she stops, she looks at your face, and you can tell that she's just she's staring at you, Moth. Um, but then she kind of goes back to doing her thing. Um, so Moth, it looks like you missed a bit of a conversation with us. Hopefully your friends can catch you up at some point, but how are you enjoying being an Echo? Everything you signed up for? Well, um, kept me away from the bottle for a little bit, but I don't know. Thought it was a way out of things. But met these lads, so uh, they're pretty fun. I think we've all come to a, a crossroads in our military lives. I can't wait to see what you guys choose next. And I hope it doesn't put us at odds with each other. Um, I think we have had a little bit of a crossroads. Um, Mr. Jewel, you, um, I get the impression um, you've been kind of rubbing me like you picked us for certain reasons. Not entirely sure what those reasons are. They might be your own. They're loyalty. <laughs> I'm just gonna kind of look at him and and like give him the eyes. Like I know there's some kind of reason. Like th just those eyes. Like I can see through your bullshit kind of eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you, know, you can say what you want when you want. Fine with that. I do have a quick question for you. Wait. Get the feeling that you might be heading somewhere different. Well, you feel right, and you missed a bit of a conversation, but I did. I did miss the conversation, and I have no idea what that conversation entailed. I just have a feeling you might not be here tomorrow. <laughs> Ma.
Martha, I knew I chose you for the right reasons. Look at you, all smart and everything. Doing doing us all proud. Um, yeah, I think I'm retiring from the Echo. No hard feelings if you choose to stay. I think you make a mighty fine soldier, officer, cadet and all. Um, but yeah, I think my military career is over. And I will be set in sail. Mm. All right. I wish you the best of luck on your venture then. To be honest, I think my Echo's days are over as well, Moth. Near right. Um. <laughs> she's she's oh. a li wee little lass in the corner. I'm going to ask, uh, listen, I don't know what's happening right now. Maybe we can all talk in a moment. Um, Mr. Jewel, do you mind if I take my friends, my compadres, if you will, and I have a quick conversation without your priviness? I do not take offense, Moth. <laughs> of course, take all the time you need. It's a lot of information. Um, and I'm going to kind of look at his arm and be like, and just not say anything, but kind of just like gaze at his arm for a second. But, uh, um, give us a give us a moment, if you will, Mr. Jewel. Checking out the gun show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the tattoo. The tattoo. Mm. Mm. As, uh, the triceps definition. As Captain, so, uh, uh, oh, sorry, as Captain Ruby Jewel, like kind of is getting up or getting away. I wanted to be like, and uh, the ship was that the one that you were uh, gallivanted off to at the uh, when we lost you at the beginning? Is that where we should? Reconnoiter. Um, I bet I can talk my mom into giving you guys a room. There's a couple of rooms upstairs that we can reserve with fresh sheets and unused sheets, uh, unused. just for the five of you guys. Um, yeah, if you want to, you're welcome to stay here. Uh, it might be safest for you to stay here, especially, Kellen. I see you're still wearing your armor. God bless you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then he kind of walks off uh, mom drinks food for these people on me please and then he kind of walks back to his mates I didn't know that was that was his mom but it's that's, perfect. that's pretty pretty interesting um, Kellen, Boot, Bray Cask does any of you know where um the uh, shrine of the serpent is. I do not. I do not think I have heard of that. No. Uh, can I make a history check? Yeah, please. That's a twelve plus a fourteen. Okay. Uh, you you know that there. Uh, that, yeah, that there is a temple here, uh, and it's a it's a small. Um, religious not cult but it's a religious following um what are they called the yanti is that what they're called mm -hmm. um yeah the the serpent race uh, they they have a small temple here it's down by the it's past the orphanage uh almost towards in this little uh bay area uh it's where the sewage spills out so it's not it's it's really a, a shitty part of town but boom uh, but that's where it's at Listen, so I don't want to be, I don't normally do things without, well, I guess I do sometimes. Well, no, I did, and I do, and it happened. So I went up back to that room, Bray, that we went to with the lady with the horns and the red eyes. Oh. She, let, she let me in. Um, do any of you know, or heard of, perhaps, a queen, and there's a little emblem which is a lion or a lioness um, in gold. Did they have a mane? Did it have a mane? Did it have a mane? Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, it looked like a manticore head. So if you're describing what a manticore head looks like or a manticore sil silhouette, no, that's what it looks like. Have you ever seen a gorgeous manticore? In the, the flushing locks of a mane that come down around its crimson steel jaw. That's what I just saw. 
and it, and it was it was very regal and I'm, I wasn't too but she said she mentioned something about a queen now, are any of you familiar with any queens no nope. no I am not but moth that was interesting how strangely poetic your description was as if you were not even trying <laughs> oh. so um thanks cask uh boot you're from burning beacon right mm -hmm. yep so more than anything can you do me a favor and roll a history check just real quick roll with advantage mm -hmm. on this one I can't anything. Oh. Yeah. 19. i'll take the second yeah, okay great. so you know um based on the job that your dad your father did in burning mm -hmm. beacon you 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 recognize this this description that Moth so eloquently gave. Um, and you're putting the pieces together, and it looks like he's describing a crest of uh, Queen Ileana, who was the, who is now the widow of King Baron. Um, so I may know the queen you're speaking of. Did I, do I, do I know her name? Uh, yeah, Queen Ileana. Yeah. Um, so the displaced queen or the displaced king had a, a wife, a queen, if you will, um, Ileana, and that is her emblem. Okay, um, so just want to backtrack, me, not normally from this area, so this is all kind of news to me. I don't know, kings and queens and all y'all have a little bit weird with who's in charge of who and all this and find it kind of funky. But yeah. if king, queen, whatever is the displaced king, well, this woman said to meet at the serpent shrine. Uh, was it tonight, DM? Was she saying tonight? So I don't think I got a date. She didn't give an exact date. Okay. She, she said to meet at the shrine if you want to change. And that that's where they're going to make the stand. So, Presumably against the attack against Stonewall? Well, I mean, if you're talking about the old king's broad, who is quite intimidating, and she, I, I will be honest, she can just kind of float about like a, I don't know, I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen any of y'all float, at least. I see birds float, but that's just the air kind of keeping them when they come in from the right and then the air stops and they kind of drift back, but that's different. My thoughts are maybe we should get a little bit of a rest. Take a look and see what this woman has to say. I get a weird fear airy feeling about it, like we might want to go in that direction. But I'll defer to the group. Um, quick question for the DM. Um, would I have known whether the queen herself was a tiefling or a human? She's a human, right? She's a human. Okay. I'm just going to keep that knowledge to myself and let Moth think what he will. Uh, just real quick. Anybody in the room not have, has anybody been drinking or uh, not been drinking? I have not been drinking. Okay. And has anybody had any purple drink? No. Hey, I thought you did. I thought you bought five or three. I, just I there. bought five, but I took two and I gave them to that guy, and that was all I did. Okay, so three are just still sitting there. Three somewhere. are on the table. If you guys bring them out, okay. all right. Quite good. Um, I did Barney, have a, I did have a uh, what do you call it? A dark elf uh, wagon bomb. Um, Cass, do me a favor. Uh, you haven't been drinking, uh, but you are engrossed in this this conversation. So do me a favor. Roll for perception. Twelve. All right. Uh, out of the corner of your, uh, your eye, you do see at the entrance, um, Bonebreaker is kind of leaning down, and someone is like whispering in his ear. And as he comes back up, you see that it's Barney. Uh, you know him from the Choking Goat. Right. And Barney's kind of looking at you guys, whispering it to Bonebreaker. Bonebreaker's looking back over you guys, uh, and then Barney exits. Um, as that's happening. You get your tensions kind of taken away as uh, Ruby comes back and just kind of places some keys on the table and says, all right, normally the rooms upstairs are on a magical law, 
Brando, uh, he keeps them locked up tight. Some idiot gave him some purple drink and he is off his rocker right now. Uh, do not let him in the room. Room 205 is yours. Lock it behind you. You do not want an elf or sorry, a gnome in bed with you in the middle of the night. It gets weird. Um, keys are yours. Lock it up tight. That's a judgment, huh? Cameron, all I know is it's you, a and fact. I, you and I are not sharing a bunk. I don't know. I think if you're going to share a bunk with anyone, it's going to be him, right? Makes uh, It evens out. Yes, Kellan McLear could have just a drawer. <laughs> it would be nice and cozy. As long as there's some kind of sheets or something in the drawer. I think I'm going to... Listen, no, no, we'll, we'll take a bed. You will sleep in one side, I'll sleep on the other side. Like in the head and the foot. Oh, yes. Just need a corner. So as the, as the night goes on, uh, as you guys are sitting there talking and kind of going back and forth and telling your, your versions of, of the day, uh, Ruby's gone back to his group. Not really jovial Ruby still, but he is joining his group and they're patting. They're still up and, and every once in a while they'll come back to the table and like try to get stories out of cask. But uh, again, it's it's they're the life of the party right now. You do see that the pride kind of head on out. Um, as the door opens, you can see that it's dark outside. Time, you don't know, but but it is dark outside. Um, and 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 that's what's happening right now. Is there anything else you guys want to do in the main room? Um, at some point, I want to chastise Moth by saying, "You know, we don't take a liking to being called to to that drink's name. You can call it just a whiskey bomb. You don't have to call it a dark elf wagon bomb. That improperly characterizes my people." Well, um, I don't know much about your people. But I do know much about drink, and I've had many good nights with that drink. So I only have fond memories, so if you're offended of my fond memories, then I don't know what to tell you. I'm strictly offended by the usage of the term. Like, imagine if every time I took a shit, I called it a half-orc uh, smiling face. <laughs> well, much... <laughs> personally, I'd be quite, uh, you know, not much is named after us folk, well, nobody's. Why, why we don't call it, like, your name, drink, like, moth shot. Call it uh, like that. A, a moth shot? Yeah. Nice. Take ownership bit. of that. Come on. Well, Make moth, call it a moth ball. I'm going to be honest. Oh. <laughs> a moth ball. Yeah. Oh. Listen, you can say whatever you want. Me mom my mom gave me that drink from a very young age, and it has a special place in my heart. I know. Call it mother's milk. I prefer to just call it what my mom said. But Your mom's a racist. Your mom is racist. Kellan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kellen. <laughs> Kellen, my mom is many things, but one of which, for sure, and for certain that she was, was absolutely colorblind. The woman had the worst eyes you can ever imagine. And she probably couldn't see six feet past her face. So if you're telling me mom a racist, you and I are gonna have words real quick. It's all right, so she's Mom. She's more blind than colorblind. Everyone's a little bit racist. What? Everyone's a little bit racist. <laughs> I'd leave the singing to Cask. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think I'm a little bit racist, Cask, or Boot, or I don't think any of us are a little bit racist, to be honest with you. This is getting a weird conversation, and I don't really want to go down this road. Um, well, well, I'll tell you one feel? thing. I, I've been drinking a little bit. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> and I have to say that if all half orcs are like you, you're pretty disgusting. <laughs> Good night, though. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, are we still... <laughs> I'm, I'm, we're still downstairs. We're still downstairs? I'm, I'm, so you, yeah, you, 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 each got a, 
you each got a key to the room, so you you, you can come and go as you like. But uh, I'll just grab the key and then like kind of chug along. I'm, I'm, I'm way I'm way too like smiley and happy uh, for someone that just called someone disgusting. <laughs> like it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I'm gonna look at Cass. I'm look at uh, at Honeycomb. I got a question about y'all. Did you say that? What I think he said, and then also said we were all. Just, if so, I, I, I think he might be a little drunk. Yeah, everybody says things that when you're drunk, things that you don't mean, awesome. things that are like next day, or you know, you're thinking shit. Why? Yeah. So, like the kind of stuff fine. that if you were in a serious relationship would cost you. Where you have to sleep on the couch, or maybe not in the same bed as the person that you're married with. That never happened to me, but <laughs> oh. but I'm like, not like, so sometimes it's good to have this kind of conversations, right? If it's some like uncomfortable feelings, we need to you know take ownership of them. If our friend here feels offended by something. Let's respect that. Mm -hmm. And maybe change something about it. Okay, yeah, I'm sure he didn't mean it. I'm sure he thinks you're drastically more disgusting than every other half-orc half out there. Wait, he was giving me... He wasn't complimenting me. I thought that was a compliment. Oh, yeah. I think that was a compliment. I was wondering if he was coming on. <laughs> so at this point, um, you see Trelina, and she's got one of the pirates by the hand. And she's approaching the table, and she she's coming right up to you, uh, Cask. And she said, mm. uh, "I need your help, real quick. You said your name was Cascola Leon, yeah? Uh, Leonel, yes. Leonel, I, yes, that's what I said. Um, in your little bit, you said that you were the captain of the Brave Bastardi. This idiot says that it's some guy named Zara Sahir Hassan Bashar." Oh, that is gazuntite to that man. <laughs> <laughs> I told you that. Does this? Does he look? Does he have the face of a liar? You fucking idiot! And she kind of slaps the pirate on the side of the head. Uh, you get all types of in here, um, Captain. Is there anything else I can get for you guys before we start cleaning up the the, the floors? Well, maybe remove that person. Get him out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> so she starts kind of wiping down the table and she gets closer to you cask and she says what what why did you tell me to get out of stonewall oh yes uh <laughs> oh that <laughs> <laughs> it's not like it was so long ago <laughs> Uh, we came across some information. Uh, one of your friends said to uh, it, it would likely be um, uh, of your best interests to sail to uh, Red R Red. Um, what was it? Star. Red, Red, Red Star. Star. <laughs> and Red Star. Yes. I have not. Would you Would you know it? We know the captain of a boat sailing to Red Star. I'm not sure why I would just pack up and leave, but I have lots yeah. of friends. Um, Cask, Ola. Wh why? Wh who told you this? Ah, uh, Trey Wiley. Trey Wiley. Oh, yes, Ambassador. Mm. Yes, he seemed to think that there was a uh, danger coming and wanted the best for you. How is he? Hopefully clothed. <laughs> well, maybe I should go talk to him myself. Is, is he is he back home yet? Is he back at the cottage? I've, I've called on him many times. Uh, yes, that is where we left him. Can, can, can I overhear this? I'm not talking that yeah. flat. I mean, yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but I kind of whisper over to Cass and be like, you should probably tell her that he said to meet at the bridge in Red Star 
Sunset, Sunset Bridge. Sunset Bridge. Yes, I coughed start, loudly. Yes, While they're doing that, I will just get close to her. So, like, well, I don't know how serious was, or if not, but this ambassador, he thinks that you were in a relationship, so. <laughs> well, you know what they say. I mean, once you go half in, you don't settle for half things, you know. Um, <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I totally relate to that. <laughs> um, all right. Obviously not. I'm not as pretty as you, but... but well, not many people are. <laughs> yeah, well... Bitch aside, <clears throat> bitch aside, um, this folk seem really, really worry about you so if you think that you should do it you should do it so i'm gonna kind of drunkenly kind of stumble in because i've definitely had a, quite a few by now don't listen uh, oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> don't listen to what all these other people will say first of all trim wiley said not to talk to him i think he might be yours uh, I don't know, in some danger, he's a little sick. He told us not to let you talk to him or even see him or even know that he was still at his cottage by the windmill. And the other part <laughs> is that he <laughs> said at the Sunset Bridge past Red Star. I'm going to look around. Yeah, I think it's time for me to go to bed. <laughs> Grab a key and stumble. And keep going up the stairs. I'll, I'll, I'll head up with your boot, but um, also he did say that um, only death will keep him from seeing you, uh, Trelina. Um, and on that note, I am going to go get me rest myself. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Um, and you were a very lovely. Mm, and come on. <laughs> and I'm just gonna put my arm around boot and like kind of walk him towards room 205. <laughs> So, so okay. she's kind of okay. cleaning the tables or whatnot. Cask, if you're still sitting there, she just does kind of look at you and says, well, thank you. If you if you see Trey Wiley, tell him I would love to meet him at the bridge. And then she kind of wiggled off. Uh, okay. How much money did I make? <laughs> if any. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, there, there's... The, the stage is full of, of coins. Uh, if you wanted to pick them up, we can, I can see. Yeah, yeah. Um, before I so go as, to bed, I'm gonna collect my, my little commish. Okay, I'll, I'll send you the so. Um, as you the group is kind of dispersing and and Trulina's kind of inside of herself right now, um, a commotion coming down the stairs as this butt naked gnome with a fedora on. Uh, comes running down the stairs holding two glasses and he's like oh thank god for the moth give me the purple drink you and he kind of streams out the front door bone breaker tries to grab him as he runs past but totally misses him and next thing you know brandle the gnome is just sprinting outside the midnight inn um and that is where we're going to end tonight okay nice. <laughs> you are Woo. muted josh so I just want to say before uh, he runs out completely, I just want to be like, you're making us all look bad. <laughs> <laughs>